In the last episode of Soap, Carol convinced Jody to share an apartment not as lovers, but as friends, even though we know she'd love to be lovers. And speaking of lovers, Dennis told Jody he'd love to have him back. Father Tim decided not to remain a father, but to become a husband and ask Corinne to marry him. Corinne loves the idea. Mr. Lefkowitz told Danny he'd kill his entire family if Danny didn't marry Elaine. Danny said he'd love to. Mr. Malou, Jessica's lawyer, told Jessica he loved her. And Jessica would have loved to have heard not guilty from the jury. Since she didn't, she'd love to know who did it. Who did? Was it Chester? Jody? Corinne? Benson? Bert? Wouldn't you love to know? Stay tuned for this week's episode of So. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells, and this is So. Benson, would you make us all some coffee, please? I can't. I beg your pardon. I can't. I'm too depressed. I'll make the coffee, Chester. No, no, Mary, please. This is Benson's job. I can't make no coffee. Mrs. Tate's in jail. I can't make coffee. I just got to sit. <laughs> you want coffee? You make it. I'll make the coffee. No, Eunice, I'll make it. No, Mary, you sit. All right, tell me how I'll make it. Come on, I'll do it. No. Where'd you stay with Chester? Let me, okay? No, Corinne, your coffee is terrible. Then don't drink it. I don't want coffee. I just want a frisco. You can have tea. Tea's easy. Got some whipped cream. I'll make some cappuccino. I oh, no. Oh, uh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Forget the coffee. <laughs> Let's all just sit. That's what I said in the first place. <laughs> I checked out the jail, and according to my calculations, a tank or a two-man bazooka team could bring the wall down. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Why don't you go outside and check for enemy planes? Yep. <laughs> now, the important thing is for us to be cool, to just sit and think, because we all know in our heart of hearts that Jessica is incapable of violence. Never in a million years, under any circumstances, could Jessica possibly have committed the crime. So with that in mind, what we have to do now is to calmly and coolly try to figure out which one of you rats did, huh? Which one? Which one of you stinking, bloodthirsty Campbells? Campbells, Campbells? Well, what about you takes, you embezzling thief? Whoa, don't stop. Don't, don't push me, Bert. I don't do know. Hey, hey, come on. Get out of here. Come on. What I do? Bert, look what you've done. Don't touch him. Chester, Chester, are you all right? Fine, I'm fine. I'm terribly sorry. Would you all excuse me for a moment? Just go on with what you're doing. <laughs> well, that's it. I can't go on. My life is over. My wife is in jail, the only woman I've ever really loved. My career is over. I'll be in jail for embezzlement. I can't go on. Might as well end it all. I'll leave a note. Paper, I need paper. Uh, the important thing is how to do it. I want it quick, quiet, and with no pain. I want it pleasant. 
Uh, it's wonderful, Tate. You want a pleasant suicide. Why don't you have it catered? <laughs> There's not a piece of paper in this kitchen. <laughs> Never thought I'd be writing a note like this. Never. Yeah, that doesn't look right. S-U-A-C-I-D-E? It's S-U-I, I think. No, no, that would be suicide. Oh, doesn't matter. They'll find a body sprawled on the note. They'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's not the smartest thing I've ever done in my life, considering I'm not too crazy about heights, but what can you do? Colonel, what happened? Are you wounded? What do you want? A tank, sir. I need a tank. Take one. Take two. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Chester. Oh. Listen, Chester, I, look, I just wanted to apologize. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay, Bert. Oh. Right. Mm. Chester, there's a knife in your door. Uh, yes, I know. It uh, makes a good handle. Oh, well, I, I don't know. If you had to get out of here in a hurry, you could leave two fingers in the kitchen. <laughs> it's dull. Huh? Oh, it's fine. Uh, these, these are all dull. Huh? All these knives are dull. They're fine, Bert. Come on, listen. Uh, let me sharpen them for you. I get a wheel right out of my truck. Mm, fine. <laughs> we like them dull. Yeah, but they won't cut like this. We don't use them for cutting. We use them for spreading butter or for door handles. <laughs> no, I tell you, I'll make them as good as new. No. <laughs> oh, the knives are gone. The oven's electric. What am I supposed to do? Jump in the blender and puree myself to death? Do you realize that there's still a murderer running around loose? <laughs> the colonel would be driving one tank. I'll be driving the other. We shall rendezvous at 0700. So everyone synchronize your watches. It is now three-ish. I wonder where the murderer is. Find that right here. You think I did it, don't you? I know you think I did it. You've been staring at me all day. Please, you. Everybody's looking at me like I'm Jack the Ripper. Corinne, they're not looking at you. They've been looking at me. I think it was the colored guy. <laughs> Nina, Nina, Nina. Wait a minute, there's a Wait a minute. do is let go of the rope and I'll be dead. I wonder how good an idea this is. I mean, what will it solve? No, this is silly. Suicide is not the answer. Here you go, Chester. Sharpen when you're bored. Here, watch. <laughs> That's not the right, genius. That's the left. <laughs> That's the right, because I write with this hand and I'm a righty. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I wear my wedding ring in my left hand, so how come it's on the same side that you're both? Well, it... well, well, because Danny's right is your left. Right. So? 
So? So when you said move it to the right, he moved to his right, which is your left. Right. Well, you should have known when I say move to the right, I am referring to the right, which I can see, my right, which is his left. So when you say move to the right, an idiot knows you move to the left. You call me an idiot? I don't want to stop with you. out. I can't hold this anymore. All right, come on. Come on. To the right now. My right. Ready? Go. Come on. Come in. It's stuck. It's nothing. Well, it's different. The company comes over, they can sit down before they come in. <laughs> uh, let it rest a while. It's probably swollen. <laughs> Danny, this is a couch, not a foot. <laughs> Same principle. Hey, Jody. Hey, this is a nice, this is a really nice place you got here. To the place. To the place. To the place. There you go. <laughs> Makes me think of the first time I had my own place. That was a lot different, though. For one thing, I didn't have a couch in the door. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, Carol. Listen, uh, I think maybe you better leave the furniture arranging to me. <laughs> uh, Carol and I are sharing the apartment. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's platonic. Platonic sounds kinky. <laughs> We're roommates. There's roommates. All right, that's roommates. That's all. all right. Room, 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 room roommates. Uh, well, you call it what you want. That's what it is. Hey, come on, Jody. Today's today. Won't you get the door closed? It's not like that. I wish it were. Okay, that's all right. All right. I believe you. I always knew he wasn't lighting the loafers. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Hi. Brought your little housewarming present. Oh, I bet you did. It's who? I, who are you? I said, what's it be? Dennis Phillips. That's Dennis Phillips, the quarterback, right? Right. Well, I'm so excited. What are you, what, uh, you live in this building, right? Do you know who this is? That's Dennis Phillips. I know. And he brings you a fern. What a sweet guy. <laughs> he, he lives in a building. Dennis Phillips lives in your own building. I can't believe this. Listen, uh, on Mondays, I'll come over. We'll discuss the games together. I, I'm Bert. How you doing? Thanks. But you're Dennis Phillips, the quarterback. I know. Oh, let go of my hand. Well, listen, uh, why don't we uh, get out of here? We got the trucks waiting for us downstairs, and uh, and Jody's got all his friends here. He's got his girlfriend. He's got his boyfriend. <laughs> oh, 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 it's good. I'm also planning on writing a book on prison reform. Well, I don't really know what prison reform is, but since I'm going to be here so long, I'll certainly have time to find out. <laughs> So, you see, Mary, everything's fine. Oh, Jesse, you are incredible. You could find the good in absolutely anything. <laughs> oh, well, Mary, I look for it. I look for it. Uh-oh. What is it? Oh, Mary. What is it, Jess? Sex. <laughs> Sex? Mary? Do you realize that prisons are full of men and women who aren't getting any sex? <laughs> well, no wonder criminals say you'll never take me alive. <laughs> Mary, what am I going to do? Well, uh, Jess, I think that you're just going to have to do without it. <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> I do. You still do? Well, at first Bert couldn't, and, and then I wouldn't, and then he could, and now I would, but now he can't because he's never home. Where is he? Well, he's working very hard lately, and by the time he gets home, I'm asleep. I think I'll put these in water. Mary, I know what you're thinking, but just because Chester always told me he was working late when actually he was fooling around, you don't have to think that Bert's doing the same thing. I wasn't thinking anything like that. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Of course you were. 
ordinary look in the first place. Chester could not possibly have been working late because he was a stockbroker, and of course the stock market closes at four in the afternoon. Bert, on the other hand, is in construction. Jesse, they don't put up buildings at night. <laughs> Well, Chester was always tired. Now, that's another very good clue, Mary. Enormous fatigue. Bert's tired. Well, that's because of all of his physical activity. Bert. Mary, the man works with his hands. I'm sure he does. Mary, Bert is not having an affair, if, if that's what you're thinking. Jessica. Hmm? How can they do this to you? I've never seen such a miscarriage of justice. My poor, sweet Jessica. I love you. Hair. It's the most beautiful color I've ever seen. What did you call it? Red. Oh, red. I think I'll go now. Mm. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, Jess. Mm. Who says there's no sex in prison? <laughs> Jessica, mm -hmm. I'll find him. I promise you I will find him. Who? The killer. I'll find him as God is my judge. I'll find him. I'll go to the ends of the earth. I'll sail every sea, climb every mountain, look in every corner of the world. Well, be extra safe and get a typhoid shot. <laughs> You will have a reaction to it, but it'll be worth it. Because then you won't have to worry about every little foreign thing you put in your mouth. <laughs> oh, Jessica, Jessica, what are we going to do? You dear, brave, sweet woman, I love you, eyes. I love you, eyes. See you tomorrow, Jess. I love you, suit. <laughs> How are you, Mrs. Tank? Okay. I brought you some food. I know you can't eat the stuff they got here. Oh, thank you, Benson. That's very nice of you. Mm hmm Are you okay? I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. Positive? No. I'm scared, Benson. I mean, every once in a while, it just kind of hits me. I'm on my way to the big home for a murder. House, house. <laughs> big house. You're right. Yeah, for a murder I did not commit. I mean, me, Benson. This is not Barbara Feldon in that movie of the week. Eden, Barbara Eden. You're right, and here I am, and it isn't a movie, and it isn't Barbara Eden in the slam, but me. Slammer. Time's up. Well... Guess we better say goodbye, Benson. Yeah, I guess. Goodbye, Benson. Oh, Benson. Not you. Bill, you've got to be strong. I mean, if you fall apart, there's not going to be anybody left. Yeah. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, Benson. Goodbye, Mrs. T. <laughs> now you promised. Be nice. Hey, good goots. Of course I'm going to be nice to her. What do you think your mother is? I wouldn't be nice to the girl you're going to marry. Oh. Dearie, I made some pate. I hope you like it. Most people claim that they spit the pate out in France once they've tasted mine. What do they know in East Orange, right? Hey, honey, get me some napkins. Oh, what a lovely dress. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. Very lovely. <laughs> You've ruined my life, you slut! I hate you! All that package of lodge in your windpipe! Oh, you have ruined my life! That's what you oh. I'm sorry. Oh, I lost my head. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. 
I have a kidney infection. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Oh, all that poison circulating in my body. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> so, I still don't know very much about you, except what I heard around. That your mother is an adulteress and your father's an embezzler. And you bimbo, you probably had more men in the home of ring car. You have ruined my life. You crap. You want my blessing? Is that what you came for? I'll give you my blessing. This is my blessing. May you never have a happy moment again for the rest of your life. And if you marry, may you know no such thing as peace and quiet. May you only know hardship and suffering and loss. And may you know that until your dying day, whatever misfortunes happen are on your heads. I can't believe it. Neither can I. Actually, she took it better than I thought. <laughs> Yes. Oh, beautiful. Oh, thank you. How are you, darling? Well, I'm a little nervous. I mean, after all, it isn't every day that a girl gets sentenced. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. This court is now in session. The Honorable Anthony Petrillo presiding. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody, please stand. Be seated. Will the defendant please rise? He just told me to be seated. <laughs> now, Mrs. Tate, you have been found guilty of murder in the first degree. Have you anything to say before I pronounce sentence? Yes. I didn't do this. I'm innocent. But... If the person is here who did it, please help me. I'm going to close my eyes now. <laughs> Nobody will be embarrassed. Well, there doesn't seem to be a great traffic jam to the bench. <laughs> so I'll go on. Mrs. Tate, you have what some people would perceive as certain advantages. You are white and you are rich. If the sentence is light, the court will be besieged with complaints from the poor and black. Therefore, in order not to appear prejudiced and to be fair in arriving at a sentence, I have ignored the fact that you are white and rich and have pretended that you are poor and black. <laughs> I sentence you to 50 years in prison, eligible for parole, in 25 years. I object, Your Honor. This sentence is unfair and excessive. Objection overruled. The court is adjourned. She didn't do it. Order in the cart. Mr. Tate, what are you talking about? I did it. What? Yes, yes, we... No, I really did it. Mr. Tate, that was a very nice gesture. Now sit down. It's not a gesture. I murdered Peter Campbell. Mr. Tate, the jury convicted Mrs. Tate. I don't care. 
I killed Peter Campbell. And I can prove it. Jessica? I hope you can understand. Understand? How can I understand, Chester? I mean, I was in jail for what I thought would be at, at least a lifetime. Away from my family and away from home. I find out that my husband set me up and you hope that I can understand. Well, Chester, I just don't understand how you can expect me to understand. No, you're right. I, I can't expect her to. All I know is, Jess, and I swear it, I don't remember anything of what I did. I guess it was so horrible that I blocked it out somehow. Not only do I not remember it, I still don't know why I did it. And I only remembered it when the pot fell on my head. A pot fell on your head? Uh, well, that's a long story, Jess. Chester, are you asking me to believe that you killed someone, made it look like I did it, and you don't remember a thing about what you did until a pot fell on your head? I guess that is asking a lot. I love you, Jess. Hello, everybody. <laughs> See, I told you I wouldn't lose this case. <laughs> Listen, I gotta hand it to you, Tate. It was really big of you the way you spoke up. Really big. Time's up, Tate. Let's go. Chester, I'll see you tomorrow. I can't believe it. In one fell swoop, all our problems are over. You're out, he's in. You must handle his appeal. That's a good idea. That way he'll never get out. <laughs> what do you mean? What I mean is, darling, I'll make sure he stays in prison forever. And then it's you and me. Just you and me. I don't believe it. Neither do I. It's such incredible luck. Get out. Just get out. OK. You got a lot in your mind right now. I'll tell you what. I'll call you later. See you, baby. <laughs> What are you doing? It's three o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep. I'm making spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti? You couldn't make something simple? The refrigerator's full of fruit. I'm really in the mood for spaghetti. You want to talk about it? Spaghetti? <laughs> What's bothering you, Billy? Oh, nothing. My dad killed someone to frame my mom. But aside from that, everything's fine. <laughs> Listen, I'm not crazy about your father. You know that. In fact, I think I'd be the last person in the world to say anything nice about him. But I gotta say this, he did confess. He didn't let her fry. Big deal. So he's an honest murderer. What are you doing up? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. We're making spaghetti. We are not making spaghetti. You are making spaghetti. In the middle of the night? What, are you crazy? Well, what are you doing? I'm making something to eat. What is this? Making something to eat. The refrigerator's full of fruit. I don't want fruit. I'm making chocolate mousse. <laughs> I thought you were on a diet. I'm making dietetic chocolate mousse. Dietetic chocolate mousse. Right. How do you make dietetic chocolate mousse? It's easy. You make chocolate mousse, and then you don't eat it. <laughs> You're not going to eat it. Not all of it. Anyway, what do I care? I'm too upset to care what I eat, so I gained 200 pounds. My father killed someone, set up my mother, and I'm going to count calories. Look at this one. She's so upset, she's not even cooking. What are you eating? I don't know. I think it's chili. You're eating cold chili? I don't care. I'm too upset to care. You know, some people, when they're upset, can't eat a thing. I wish I was one of those. So do I. I can't believe it. It's like a nightmare. Daddy killed somebody. He's a murderer. Our father is a murderer. Well, strange people do strange things, and your father's certainly a strange man, so you know... He's a murderer, Benson. I just wonder if it's hereditary, you know, like, if it's in the genes. 
Like, I've already inherited a little asthma and a large chest. <laughs> the idea of murder doesn't thrill me. Hey, it could be worse. You could be her. She has a lot of asthma and a little chest. <laughs> oh! Everyone's up. Well, I... I just thought that I'd come down and make something to eat. Have some fruit. No, I don't think so. I think I'm going to make my own snack. Well, what are you doing? Me? I'm in the mood for turkey. But it's frozen. Well, it'll thaw out when I cook it. Yeah, in about two days. Oh, well, I wanted something to eat before then. Well, have some fruit. No, I don't want any fruit. You're really pushing the fruit. Well, it's just that I buy it and nobody eats it. In a few days, I open the refrigerator and it's full of little brown, furry, wrinkled things. Billy, did you put your hamsters in the refrigerator? <laughs> Rotten fruit is in the refrigerator. Rotten fruit? Uh, Benson, you mustn't buy rotten fruit. Well, on second thought, I don't think I'll eat anything. I lost my appetite. I guess you're all waiting for me to say something. I'm waiting for you to give me the turkey. I... I don't know what to say, except that... no matter what, I still love your father. But, Ma, he killed somebody and he framed you. Well, it certainly does look that way. <laughs> Oh, I wish I were Donna Reed. <laughs> I mean, Donna Reed would have something wonderful to say. Or even Shirley Jones, for that matter. She'd have something just as good to say, and maybe even fresh-baked cookies. <laughs> or Loretta Young. Of course, she wouldn't have anything wonderful to say, but she would make a stunning entrance. Well, I'm going to make a stunning exit. Good night. Good night, Benson. I just don't believe that it's as simple as it seems. I mean, I don't believe that you live half your life with a man and not really know him. Your father's a good man. You all loved him when he was here for birthdays and Christmas. You loved him when he took you to the ballet, when he bought you your first tie. You loved him when he taught you to swim and drive the car, remember? I mean, you all loved him all those years that he was here for you. I just think that if you really love your father, you'll love him now. It's Thursday. I can't go on like this. I can't go on being alone like this. That's why I have to keep talking to myself. Oh, if only a bird would fly in to keep me company, that would be so nice. I remember how it helped Bert Lancaster. Roommate, take. Oh, thank God, somebody to talk to. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Oh, you don't know how happy I am to see you. You just don't know how happy I am. Shut up. <laughs> oh, uh, well, yes, of course, I'm sorry. You're not happy to be here. That's terrible of me to say that I'm happy that you're here. To, you see, what I mean is it... Uh, oh, excuse me, that's mine. <laughs> not anymore, Dick. Uh, yes, I see. <laughs> well, what'll I shave with? Every morning, I'll rub your face against the wall. <laughs> You'll rub my face against the wall? Oh, oh, I see. They've given me a funny roommate. <laughs> I like that. You'll rub my face against the I wall. I want that tooth, the gold one. Open up. <laughs> mine? My gold tooth? Mine? Oh, you're a funny fellow. I like your sense of humor. What do you expect me to do? Rip it out? <laughs> right. What are you in for? Murder. I'm wanted in ten states. Murder? Oh, my God! What if they put me in? What? 
Help! Help! What are you in here for? Huh? <laughs> Murder. <laughs> What's so funny? Murder? You? That's right. <laughs> what did you do? Bore somebody to death? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny? You? Oh, no, not you. No, no. Uh, what you said, that cute little thing you said about my being boring. <laughs> you laugh when I tell you to laugh, you understand? <laughs> All right, entertain me. Dance. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Dance. Dance? You mean la di da dance? I mean dance now or you're going to have trouble walking later. Oh, yes, dance, dance, that kind of dance. Uh, well, I may be a little rusty. What would you like, tap, ballet, a little Martha Graham maybe? I can't dance, I can't just dance. I, I need music. Sing. <laughs> Picture you upon my knee, tea for two and two for tea. Don't touch me. Who? You lay one finger on me and I'll break it off. <laughs> What? Coming home at four in the morning. I was working. Really? What are you, a night watchman? <laughs> Don't. Uh, wait a minute, uh, Mary, uh, what are you talking about? What am I talking about? What am I talking about? I will tell you what I'm talking about. I am talking about all these weeks we haven't made love because you've been working till four o'clock in the morning. And I was stupid enough to believe it. Well, now I know what you've really been doing till four o'clock in the morning, Bert. I figured it out, and it's not work. <laughs> what is it? You don't know. No. How can you not know? You're the one that's doing it. Doing what? Having an affair. I am? Yes. <laughs> With who? Well, I mean, am I having a good time? Why can't you just admit it? Because it's not true, Mary. Good night, Mary. You are going to sleep? Yes. <laughs> you have got some nerve, you know that? You kill my husband. You become impotent. Then you become invisible and get yourself committed. I stand by you through all of that, and as soon as you get better, you go out and have an affair. Oh, oh yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, if I'm out having an affair till 4 o'clock in the morning, why, when I get home, do I wake you up to make love? Oh, come on, why in the world would I do that? To trick me. Huh? Nightmare. It's, it's just like the married man who was having an affair and had to, to eat two dinners every night, one with his mistress and one with his wife. Of course, he became a fat slob, and they both had dumped him. <laughs> Served him right. Wake up, Bert! What are you doing? I'm sleeping downstairs. Why? Because I'm getting mad. You can't be mad! What do you mean, I can't be mad? You're the one that's having the affair. I'm the one that's mad. Oh, you, Mary, are a dope. Oh! That's what you want, a real dope. First of all, I'm not having an affair. I am not having an affair, nor do I want to have an affair. And if I was having an affair, I would be a hell of a lot smarter than to have it at four o'clock in the morning and tell you I was working, you know. <laughs> I'd have my affair at a totally different time of day. A time of day when you wouldn't be suspicious and I wouldn't be so sleepy. <laughs> yeah, I have been coming home at four o'clock in the morning, Mary, because I've been killing myself, working to make a better life for us. That's what I've been doing. Oh, day, I'm up on the girders supervising every job. At night, I'm in the office, huh? Doing paperwork. I got bills, payrolls, invoice, huh? 
don't, don't cry, Mary, like you always do when I'm mad, so I'll stop yelling, because it's not going to work. I knew I hate that. I can't help it. I've been so upset about everything. Danny, Jody, the Tates, I, I don't know what to think anymore, and that's why. Oh. Blow your nose. Oh, oh, I'll blow out, Mary, not in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said all those terrible things, but everyone else I love is either in jail or getting out of jail or getting married or moving out, and so I figured, why not you too? I mean, every time you look at me, I am crying. I'm not exactly the most enchanting woman in the world these days. <laughs> You are to me. How can I be? Because I love you. I don't know why. Oh, you, you don't know why, you? You blow your nose in instead of out. <laughs> you pull all the covers over to your side when you sleep. You take food off my plate. And you have never, ever ironed one of my shirts correctly. And I think that that's all adorable. <laughs> if I didn't love you, I would have divorced you by now. <laughs> And that's how I know. I just love you. Bert. I'm a dope. <laughs> <laughs> I iron your shirt. It's terrible. Yeah, it's all right. No, no, I want the truth. I do an awful job. Yeah, Mary, it's really terrible. Shirts are not so easy. I know. You know? They have collars. Did you know that? You should try right. ironing your collars. It's all right, Mary. Stop. Don't. We'll send the shirts out. <laughs> and start to bake sugar cake for me to take for all the boys to see. Tate. We will raise a family. Boy for you, a girl for me. Can't you see how happy we will be? Jess. Chester, it's so nice to see you enjoying prison life. I mean, there I was at home worried sick about him, and here he is singing and dancing. I brought you some food. If I'd known you had a roommate, I would have brought more. Oh, that's okay. Uh, he's not having any. Oh, why? Upset stomach. <laughs> they put me in with a killer. Well, of course they did, dear. I imagine they do it like computer dating. <laughs> you two have a great deal in common. Jess, I'm not a killer. Now, Chester, I know you don't think of yourself as a killer. I'm sure you consider yourself primarily a stockbroker. Yeah. Nonetheless, <laughs> Chester... I, I did kill Peter. There's no denying that. It's just... It's all so confusing. I know it is, dear. A and we know that there's more to this than meets the eye. And I want you to know, Chester, we're all standing by you. Thank you, Jess. Mm -hmm. Now, while you're here, I want you to volunteer for work in the prison laundry. <laughs> the laundry? Mm. That way you'll come out with a skill. <laughs> You see, darling, when you do get out, I think the idea of going back to Wall Street is out of the question. <laughs> Time's up. Oh, dear. Yes. Goodbye. I'll see you next week. Ta. <laughs> you can forget about seeing her next week. What do you mean? You ain't gonna be here next week. Oh, no. Oh, no, please don't. Oh, no, please, I beg you, no. Come on, your knees tape, for God's sake. Can't believe you're in here for murder. Listen, tomorrow I'm escaping. You are? I'll miss you. You're coming with me, Tate, as a shield. This way, when they start shooting at me, I got you to put in front of me. I'm not going. You are. I'll tell the guard. I'll tell the guard. Whoa. You're coming with me, Tate. I am not. You are too? No way. You're coming, Tate. Absolutely not. Then I'll kill you. When do we leave? <laughs> huh? 
Hi. Well, did you see Elaine? Yeah. I did everything you told me to. Exactly like we rehearsed? You know it. You told her that you were impotent. <laughs> right. I told her that uh, I had this family disease, and I finally just caught it the other day, and that if she wanted to marry me, she'd have absolutely nothing to look forward to in the bed department. Great. <laughs> so what happened? Girl knows a lot of tricks. <laughs> She took me by surprise. So now we have to pick out presents for the ushers. Yeah. Hey, why should I worry? I mean, at the rate she's got me going, I won't live to see October. I gotta go to work. I'll see you later. All right. Give my love to Mom. Yeah. Oh, did I just miss a very popular sports figure? It happened to have been Danny. Really? You mean it wasn't the Rose Bowl queen? Carol, what is it with you? Nothing. I just had no idea that when we took an apartment together, it'd be like living in the Continental Baths. Carol, I've had it with you. We had an arrangement. I told you I was going to live my own life. I know. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just that I never see you. I saw more of you when we weren't living together. Jody, I just miss you, that's all. I miss spending time with you. Please don't be mad. Listen, how about I apologize by fixing us a really terrific dinner tonight? I'll fix your favorite meal, okay? What's your favorite meal? Or uh, we could go out, if you'd rather go out. My treat, okay? Uh, oh, oh, I could cook, whatever. Uh, I can't tonight. Oh. Oh, okay, sure. Some other time, then. Another night, there's lots of nights. Carol, is something wrong? No, no. You sure? Right, sure. Okay, I gotta get dressed. Carol, uh, you sure nothing's wrong? I'm positive there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong, nothing at all. I'm just pregnant with your child. And now, coming attractions of Soap. Go ahead and jump, T. After you. Okay. <laughs> I always thought I'd love the girl I married. I always thought the girl you'd marry to be a little like me, but Elaine is... She's a pig. <laughs> hey, you're very pretty. Listen, you. If you came up here intending to rape me, let me tell you right now, it's not going to be any fun at all because I'll spit in your face. How do you two guys like working together? Oh, it's terrific. Great. Sure. One's got a flea brain, the invisible man's got none at all. <laughs> Father Tim, what are you doing here? I'm getting married, didn't you know, Father? You mean priests can marry now? I don't believe this. Don't sit! Don't sit! Uh, Sally? Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sally, what are you doing back there? Nothing. That's a nice touch, a real nice touch. A little hair massage. And a... Oh, that's nice. Oh, hey, oh! What about sex? Carol, I promise you that if we get married, I'll never touch another man again. Jody is going to be a father. Dennis is pregnant? All this and much more in future episodes of So. Soap is videotaped before a studio audience.